Hello, Dunkson Miner here. Continuing on my explorations in Railcraft, you can see behind me the latest device that I tried to create. Um, basically, the notion here is I want to be able to make one power plant someplace in the world and then have a powertrain go around and charge up all of the batteries at a bunch of different installations. So this is a tiny little mock-up of what that might look like. Um, let's dive in. Okay, so let's start over here on the left with the power plant. Um, I didn't want to spend a lot of time building an actual power plant, so I just used a bunch of reactant dynamos, filled them up with fuel, basically, and now they generate a whole lot of power at uh, 4 RF per tick at the moment, but originally they were at like 80 RF per tick. 40, okay. Uh, which meant this bank of uh, <laughs> uh, generators produced quite a lot of power very, very rapidly. All of that goes into this Redstone Flux loader, uh, which can hold 4 million FE um, RF equivalent. And what I want to do is fill up any capacitors that come by. And I want to just go until they're full and then let them leave. I don't want to wait around until I've used up the unending supply of power I have over here. Down here, I've got a locking track in holding mode. So anytime a cart which can accept power passes underneath, this is going to get um, stopped until it's filled with power. And there goes our redstone flux cart, which holds 2 million RF. So far, so good. That's just a regular engine. And in a full setup, of course, you'd want something like all of this stuff down here for refueling and keeping it going. On this side, then, we have the matching component, the Redstone Flux Unloader, which has a capacity likewise of 4 million RF, and you can see is currently being pulled from. So it's going up through this, through this battery, down through here, and into this kind of fake little setup I've got for a, um, a service that uses power. So in this case, it's just processing some ores. Get back to that later. The problem I ran into is if I have this thing hooked up directly to these machines without that cell in between, then this thing comes along and even though I'm in process until out of rumor supply, the train just stops forever <laughs> until this stops running basically. Because what's happening is the power is being pulled constantly from the cell inside of here and so this thing never detects that it's full or done or, you know, it's never gets to that point where it's out of room in the receiving end of things. And so it'll just sit there until it drains the battery completely in the train, which of course is not what I had in mind. If I've got a bunch of different installations that all need power, then I want this to come and fill this one up and then move along without having depleted its battery so it can bring power to other places. So I needed some way to prevent that from happening. And it turns out the best thing to do was to use this energy cell set in the mode where it's only active when its redstone signal is off. Okay, so when there's not a redstone signal, it will feed power to the machinery. When there is a redstone signal, it'll cut off the power. Then I have an any cart detector here pointing upwards. So it's feeding its redstone signal into the energy cell. So every time the train pulls into the station, this is going to turn on a redstone signal saying, hey, there's a train here telling the energy signal, please stop providing power to the building for a little while. And this then doesn't get power pulled out of it anymore because this energy cell has long since gotten filled up. And what happens is the system gets into a kind of stasis where there's no constant drain of power because this is basically cut off right here. So the train stops, fills up this unloader. The unloader's not losing power to anything. And so it says, okay, we're all set. You can go now. And the train gets a redstone signal to this uh, locking track and the train moves along. At that point, there's nothing underneath this detector anymore. So the detector turns off its redstone signal, which tells this guy, hey, no redstone signal, you're allowed to transmit power now. And it resumes transmitting power into the base. So every time the train comes by to refill power, this get these machines are on their own. They're using their internal buffers for a little bit. Now, in this case, their buffers are totally adequate. There's no big deal. If that weren't the case, then I'd probably put another energy cell over here, say 
in the building, so to speak, you know, whatever this uh, facility is, so that it can hold enough power to maintain operations while this refilling process is happening. So you might need an extra cell. Okay, so we've gotten the part now where we are allowing the refill to happen partially, pulling some power from the train, but not draining it entirely. And that way I might have a long, long train with a whole bunch of energy cells that has a rather large capacity that can go around and keep topping off all of the different uh, places around the world. Looking at what we've got over here, uh, if you're not familiar, these are thermal expansion. Uh, this is a pulverizer that takes ores and breaks them down to two dusts. Then the dusts go through the furnace and get transformed into one ingot. And the other half of what I wanted to figure out is um, how do you deal with a train that has all kinds of different sorts of cargo that's coming and going? Because I don't want to have a different locomotive for each and every type of ore. And I was pretty sure that it was possible. I just wanted to make sure I really understood how to do it. And it turns out it's pretty straightforward. Let me stop this train for a second so we can see what's going on here. So the train is just an ordinary train. It's got some water. It's got some cold coke. It does the normal thing that it does. Here we've got a cargo cart which has a filter in it. And the filter says only allow this item to be placed in this cart. And you must have a filter. If you have no filter, it accepts no items. So the one item that this cargo cart can haul is gold ore. And then this one, gold ingots. And this one, copper ore. And this one, copper ingots. So for every type of item you would like your train to move, you do need another cart, but you don't need another locomotive. Okay, so having filled up all of these carts over here, and we'll take a moment just to look at these. These are ordinary item loaders. I've got one gold ore being bumped, dumped in exactly one each time the train goes past because I want to see this working. This is a demo. Ordinarily, you'd change this into transfer everything. So any ore that had been deposited here from your mine, say, would get moved into the cart all at once and you wouldn't have the train going around lots of times. But this is just a demo. So here I've got all the ore that has come out of my mind, theoretically, might have been creative mood cheating. And over here, the same setup. And in both of these, I've got this cargo cart as the filter. I don't want to put this in any kind of cart except a cargo cart. So train comes by, the gold ore cart gets filled with exactly one ore from this guy, and the copper ore cart gets filled with exactly one ore from this guy, and both of those get released and the train moves along. These are just an ordinary holding mode. So it's the cart that gets underneath that matches up with the filter capability that brings the whole train to a stop and then goes on again. Over here, I've got an item unloader. Uh, I've got the same kind of holding track here. This guy has a filter of gold ore and copper ore and I say move all matching items, which means I'm going to take the gold ore and I'm going to take the copper ore, whichever one in however many amount um, and I'm going to keep processing until I've drained the cart. So this is more realistic as to what you'd expect. And in fact, you'd probably have this filter set up with all of the kinds of ore that you want this station to process. And maybe your mod pack has more ores than nine. And so you might have another item unloader that gives you more filter capacity. So you can keep pulling other things out. All of those, here we'll set him going again. Off you go. All of those wind up going into uh, just an item duct that transfers anything in here to over here. And then that sets things through the machinery. The outputs from the furnace then wind up in this duct, which goes along up and around into this item loader, which will fill up with both gold and copper, depending upon the kind of ore that gets processed. And those filters say, go ahead and load up a cargo cart with either of these things, transfer everything that you've got until you're complete. So every time a train comes by with a cart that can accept gold or copper, it dumps all the gold and copper into the train. And that's it. <laughs> so we've got a system whereby we've got two different trains doing two different jobs on two different sets of tracks, potentially, or maybe the same. I didn't want to fuss with signaling for this example, um, but you certainly could. And that's how you do it. Um, you've got your power plant on the far left. You've got your flux loader, which is going to take power from the power plant, fill up the battery. When you get around, you've got this fancy little relay system so that 
you stop drawing power when the train comes underneath so that the train actually will leave again without draining the entire train. And then the power goes into some kind of processing plant, whatever it is you've got going on. And then over here, we've got uh, item loaders to dump the ores. Um, I'm pretty sure these can be set up just the same as I did the loader. I was trying it both ways just to see how it worked. But you could put your copper ore and whatever the other kinds of ore here and have a buffer here. So your one item loader at your mine could suffice if you had fewer than nine ores. Um, so you load up your train, you've got your item unloader to drop all the things that are gonna get processed at this station, whatever processing happens. And then finally, a little bit further down the track, you've got a loader for the final outputs, which maybe it's the same train, maybe it's a different train that picks up final outputs and brings them back to your home base. Doesn't really matter. But that gives you a power uh, station for refining and trains to bring in the power, bring in the raw materials, and take away the finished products. That's it for now. Talk to you later.